Many persons who have out-of-hospital cardiac arrest suffer anoxic brain damage and may require constant care at home or in nursing homes. Owing to bystander CPR and defibrillation and to improvements in post-resuscitation care, there has been increasing survival after out-of-hospital cardiac arrest. However, little is known about long-term functional outcomes beyond survival and how bystander interventions influence these outcomes. Investigators used data from the Danish Cardiac Arrest Registry from 2001 to 2012 and found that of 34,459 eligible persons with out-of-hospital cardiac arrest for whom resuscitation was attempted, 2,855 survived to 30 days. The proportion of 30-day survivors increased from 3.9% to 12.4% over the study period. In one year of follow-up of the 30-day survivors, 276 died and 300 were diagnosed with anoxic brain injury or admitted to a nursing home. For arrests not witnessed by emergency medical service personnel, bystander CPR increased from 66.7% to 80.6% between 2001 and 2012. As compared with no bystander resuscitation, bystander CPR and defibrillation were both associated with a significantly lower risk of anoxic brain injury or nursing home admission, with adjusted hazard ratios of 0.62 and 0.45, respectively. The authors conclude that bystander interventions were associated with significantly lower risks of brain damage or nursing home admission and of all-cause mortality than no bystander resuscitation. Full study results are available at nejm.org.